Hey guys, Angel here. Um, I, sorry, um, I'm trying to get it so you can see me better. I have a lot of black underneath my eyes and I just don't care right now. Um, I haven't been crying or anything because I've already shed my tears for all of this stuff. Just everything that's gone on this month and it's pretty crazy that like this all hit in my birthday month, you know. But, like I said, we're pulling it out and we're getting it together. And, um, you know, this is going to be my last, you know, words to my brother-in-law and his family and his grandmother and his mother out there somewhere, if she hasn't heard. Um, I miss you, Justin, and Chrissy V. Strong, you know, um, to his, his brother and his sister and his dad and stuff. I know it's rough going through what it is you're going through right now. I know what I'm going through, and um, I know how much I cared <laughs> about Justin. Um, but the best thing you can do for Kenny and and yourselves and Justin is just to is just to carry on. You know, just to keep on going and not and not act or even allow this to shatter you like it has. And um, like I said, so just pick up the pieces and just keep on going, you know. Um, all I can say is, uh, you know, I miss him a lot. And I know that people thought from whatever happened between Justin and, uh, and I, um, there was nothing there more than a severe brother and sister relationship. Um, he was, like I said, my best girlfriend. He was the best friend that I've ever had in my entire life, even more than my sister. And, um, he was always there for me. He would always tell me, you know, when I'd call him, you know, talking about the pain I was going through, he'd always, you know, talking about, you know, if you ever need money or if you ever need this or, you know, or just trying to show me as much love as he could possibly show me in whatever way that he could to, to let me know even if no one else in the family accepted him I always did I always even if I was pissed off at him for doing something to my sister or me or whatever he always was accepted in my heart and I will never let go of Justin and I will never forget him and I will always talk about him I know if I ever have kids even though my time is getting shorter to to be able to have children that they will know of him and they will know who he is and they will know of his his wife and his brother and his dad and and the life that we had with him while he was here and they will know his son Kenny and um, shout out to Kenny this is Angel from Angel Sky Channel um, I don't know if you remember me but um, I'm just saying you know you, you know things are gonna be okay guys so um, I know things seem really rough right now, but I was a conflict manager and no matter if I'm bipolar or crazy or or just clinically insane, um, I know that in times like this that I will pull things together to be here and help people that need it through situations like this. So, like I said guys, um, I'm going to make this vlog for today. I don't know if I'm going to post it tonight. Um, I'm going to post it possibly tomorrow because I don't know how late I'm going to be up tonight but um you know I've been pretty upset I, I've taken this pretty hard and I can only imagine what you know everyone else is taking this as and you know I just I just I don't know you know there's not really much you can say to really like mend what's going on and what's been taken from us other than time and just dealing and coping with what has happened in our, in both of our families, the Harrisons and the Lawrences, and you know just just everyone else in Texas and anyone you know that knows Chrissy here and you know anyone that you know sees and knows what's going on in our family. You know it's just it's it's a very big loss to us. And um, he was a good man, and like I said, you know he will always be remembered as a good person, no matter what anybody proves or says about him. So, like I said, guys, I, um, I just wanted to get on. I was, uh, what was I saying? I was just kind of going through the projects. Um, I'm on my dad's part of the computer. This computer was my dad's and my mom's, and it was locked for a really long time, and I just left it alone and made my own master account, and then all of a sudden I was, like, fooling around, like, getting on the computer, and the password change popped up, so I changed the password, so I got to get into his, his account, because I always knew that he had, like, old videos from us in our childhood days, um, because he, like, always would fiddle with stuff like that, like, editing, put the cameras and stuff, and, um, so I found a bunch of, like, old videos, and the only project that was on here on his iMovie editor app was called My First Project, and it was just a piece 
that my of my little sister. Um, is anything more than a sister and I know my eyes are black but I don't really care but I love you and I miss you and like I said my all my love goes with the family and my sister and you know his son and just everything like that and I hope you guys are gonna be okay you really are you're gonna be okay this isn't gonna make you this is gonna make you stronger this is just gonna make you more of a family and it's just gonna bring you all together even closer than you already were so like I said, I uh, I hope you guys are well. Uh, God bless, many blessings, and you know, there's not much more else I can do or say or even feel. Um, and it sucks being this far away and not being able to at least you know be close to my sister. And I try to call her and be there for her as much as I can. But you know, as you guys know, I don't know if you've seen the recent vlog, but um, you know, I'm going through some shit right now with my older brother and. Um, you know, uh, thank God he's not in this house. Like, like I said, I'm kind of happy it happened because he got his place. He got a place for himself now because who knows if, you know, anything would ever happen if he would ever save enough money because of the kids or his bills or whatever, his car. Because by the time he got enough money, his car probably would have broken down and then he would have had to put all his money in that and then he would have to stay here longer. So I'm kind of glad it happened because now he's got his own place and now he has a home of his own unless he chooses to leave or move then he can do what he wants and he's not stuck in a little hole in my place being bossed around or whatever by me and like I said guys you know I don't know what's gonna happen on the 28th when I gotta go to court um, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be too bad given whatever the outcome of it is whether I you know I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be I mean it sucks because I was arrested and I you know I was trying so hard I mean so hard to just you know whatever was wrong with me back then to fix and do better with with my life after everything that I had went through because you know like I said when I was homeless I there was a point when I told myself after I'd been out there so long that I wasn't coming home you know and that I, this wasn't gonna happen again and I don't care what you people say or do I'm just not happening and uh, I always told myself I, I made a promise to myself that I'm gonna be an independent woman and I'm gonna make my own money and I'm gonna do my own thing and no one's gonna no one's gonna keep me down you you can arrest me 50 million times and put me away for 50 years but as soon as I get out I'm gonna I'm going to beat you in court and sue you, and I'm going to live with millions of dollars doing whatever it is I do. So I did. I was out homeless for almost 12 to 15 months. I don't count the last few months because I was in a home. I was in shelter, but um, I was still under my parents' thumbnail um, pretty much, and um, I did. I told myself about six, six months in, I just said in my head, you know, I didn't say it out loud that, you know, I just stopped for a second while I, wherever I was in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, told myself, you know what, this is it. It's over. I'm not coming home. And no matter what you guys say, you know, whatever happens, I'm not I'm not going to be moving back in with my parents, whether I'm homeless on the street and dead, or I have a mansion in Tahiti. You know, it's just not happening. So, anyways, guys, I love you, Justin. I love you, Chrissy. I love you, Harrison's. Uh, I love you, Mom and Dad. I, I just, I love all you guys. And just take this as a reminder that, you know, everything that you see sitting in front of you or on the side of you or below you or whatever you think in your little head, you know, you may think that you can get that now, but you don't know how easily it can be taken away from you and nothing, you did nothing to deserve it. You, you, you worked your ass off to get what it is that you have in your home or the home that you have or the money in your pocket and five seconds later you think everything's cool and that you're safe and you're walking down the street and you're robbed and shot and now you're dead. So like I said, 
take it easy guys I'm gonna get out of here I'll finish this up I'll make a little bit of peace a little bit in a little bit and finish this vlog but like I said God bless you Justin Burma Justin Riley Harrison you were the best man that my sister could ever have and that's why you were her husband and you know David Whalen was a good man but he's also gone and I don't think there's anybody that's going to ever top you in Chrissy's life, but if it's need be, I hope she does find someone that can help take care of her in her in in her later years or now or whatever and you know, I will always miss you and I will always be here for you and whatever it is that you were going through, it doesn't matter. It was nothing compared to to what it was that, you know, caused all of this. So, I love you and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Um, you know, uh, I got to get ready for Halloween. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to do about um, Christmas yet. I'm still working on Angel Christmas. Um, that is to come. Uh, probably close to the end of October um, you'll start seeing more of promotions for Angel Christmas or just things on my channel about Angel Christmas whatever um, I wanted to show you guys something um, this is a very <sighs> sacred piece in my home and my family or my family my mine like the family I don't have just me or whatever but um this is a, the last certificate or piece of my childhood from school of my academic achievements before I moved to this state um, that I have and luckily my mother was a very smart woman and the funny thing about it is when I found this I was going through my box just kind of going through memories and stuff and I saw a picture frame right and I'm like what is this you know oh I've been just looking at it you know and I know that in my book that I had made a little like memory scrapbook of like all my achievements and stuff that I had two presidential seals of honor right for being making honor roll and just being a good student and getting straight A's and stuff or maybe like one B okay like no B's but anyways um, but the only thing I didn't know is that I didn't have only two I had three of them so when I found this, I flipped out. I was so happy that my mom had saved this because, you know, even though if you ever need it and you don't have the certificates or the information that you need and you know that, you know, anything, you're innocent or that you absolutely have to have it, you can have it sent to you and it, like, it has to be a dire need. Like, you have to, like, seriously have to have a really good reason to have it all reprinted up and it will be reprinted up exactly the way that it was. Um, literally same paper, same ink, same, same, same stickers, same, the same man will sign his name, um, and it will be documented if it's, if he's older, if it's any different, and everything like that. But, um, this is the last honor roll certificate, and it says honor roll. Academic excellence. It says, I, the undersigned, hereby declare that Mary M. Lawrence has completed all academic requirements to be a member of the Honor Society of William Bristow Middle School. Then it was signed hold on a second, my computer went off again, by Vic Thornhill, which was principal at the time, and the date was November 6th, 1997, was when I got this last seal of academic honor. And, um, this is what it looks like. This seal right here, I don't know if you can see it very well. I'm just kind of like moving it around so that you can like see it better. It's got, it says Brentwood Union School District around the side of it, that right here, like Brentwood, and it goes all the way around. And it has, um, if I'm correct, it has like an eagle imprinted in the insignia in the center of the seal, which is. This is, is a legal sticker, and it is straight from the United States White House Presidency. Um, these names all over the school district, even to this very day, um, kids that are awarded or very highly achieved in academics or in anything like that, their names are, a list of names are sent to the president of whoever the president is at that time, 
and um, they are checked by the president for legit legitimacy and just being the right people for these seals. And um, those who are awarded these seals um, later on in life, they are checked once again and blah, 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 and stuff like that. But um, these seals are only given to like certain people and um, they're not they're they're not very easy to come by so uh, like I said I just wanted to show you something that I'm very thankful that my mom was such a pack rat and a keepsake freak about this is the last piece that I have of that literally just shows any bit of my childhood um, I uh, I just was very proud that she was smart enough to, to tuck that away and keep that that for me because I don't know if she knew the events that were going to occur in my life or the things that I was going to go through in my life, but it really means a lot to me and I want her to know and my father to know that I love them very much no matter what's going on. Oh, that's my necklace. I keep thinking that's my hair. But um, no matter what's going on in my life right now at this current moment, Mom and Dad, know that I love you more than anything and that, which... You know, it's funny, um, I had a trophy somewhere, and I don't know where it's at, so I'm going to have to look for that, because I know my brother moved around a lot of shit, um, so i got to find it. I thought I had it, but I didn't find it, but I'll find it later. It, I had one trophy that was in my box, and I had another box down there, so there might be another one in there, but I had one trophy that was left out of all the trophies that I had won or gotten, um, and I had it sitting with it, but he came in and like totally destroyed my room <laughs> to just like being a hermit in it. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you that piece just to show you guys who I am and where I come from, no matter what you see on my face or what you see in my background in a list in the department or whatever. And I just wanted you to know who I am and who my family is and you know where we come from and what we stand for because no matter what happens to me or what whether that scratch was on purpose and I'm lying straight to my through my teeth or it was an accident I will never change from who I am when I was younger and there's nothing in this world that can ever make me change and like I said there's no amount of drugs there's no amount of illegal activity there's no amount of anything and I will always be me so you know, you guys can bite it, Krispy Kreme. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to show you that. I was very proud of my mother for keeping that for me because I think she kind of knew the things that I was going to go through and the struggle I was going to have to go through as I grew up um, uh, finding my way through life and learning what I needed to learn to become who I am. And I just wanted to say thank you. And uh, I will talk to you guys a little bit later. Um... I probably make one more little ending piece to this. I just wanted to show that to you, and I will talk to you guys um, at the end of this vlog. So, bye guys. All right, guys. So I'm saying good night. Um, this vlog is now over, and uh, I'm going to. I have a candle right here, and I'll show it to you. It's a candle I used during. Um, my Valentine's Day this last year. It's like a apple cinnamon kind of like apple pie smelling apple something candle. And uh, this is some um, Palo Santos. And uh, I'm just going to allow this to burn and cleanse and protect and heal. Um, so as the smoke rises and dissipates within the air and disappears, so will hopefully our pain and sorrows and we will start to mend through uh, good workings and good deeds. So I'm going to talk to you guys later, and have a wonderful night, and bye-bye.